Hey, seventh grade, I hope you're being good. I love you and I miss you. Um, I just thought I would check in real quick and give you um, my input on the notes so that you'll be ready for your test right on Monday when I get back. So make sure that you got all the notes done today and then you can watch this just to have me explain it. So these notes are about homeostasis. Homeostasis involves internal and external stimuli, which are these two foldables that we glued in yesterday. Um, my page numbers are different than yours. So your foldables are glued on two different pages. I messed mine up. That's my fault, so don't worry about that, okay? So homeostasis means the process of staying the same. Homeo means the same, stay means staying, and sis is the process. So the process of staying the same. A longer definition is the process of an organism maintaining a balance of stable conditions in order to survive. So homeostasis is all about balance. Your body always wants to be in balance and always wants to have the perfect conditions. So that's what this is showing here. It's a balance and right now it's in balance and it has homeostasis. So then something called a stimulus, it's anything that could disrupt the homeostasis, jumps on this side of the balance and gets it off balance. So this is a little bacteria that jumps on and gets your body off balance. So then a response from your body jumps on the other side and tries to get it back to balance. So when a bacteria enters your body, your body responds by giving you a fever to try and kill that bacteria. So then slowly that balance is tilted back up to normal and you're back in homeostasis so you're happy again. Okay, so a stimulus, again, that's anything that changes your condition. So a change in external, which means outside, or internal, inside, conditions of the organism. And then the organism responds in order to maintain a balanced, stable conditions and survive. So in order to maintain homeostasis. Okay, so this pink foldable is all about internal stimuli. If you look really closely at that little guy, he has an arrow pointing from inside. So that means there's an internal stimulus. Okay, the main internal stimulus for plants is wilting. Okay, that happens when um, wilting is the response to the stimulus of being low on water. So plants wilt when they have a lack of water or a low turgor pressure or a lack of nutrients. Okay, so this would be a picture of a plant wilting. That's its response to a lack of water. For animals, the internal stimuli for animals are either vomiting or fever. Okay, other examples, sorry I messed up here, but you can see it better in the PowerPoint. Other examples include if you're hungry, you eat. Okay, that's an internal thing. You also get thirsty, which is an internal stimulus, and your response would be to drink. And then if you're tired, you sleep. Okay, for vomiting, animals vomit when food is spoiled or contaminated. Okay, vomiting is response, food being spoiled is the stimulus. And fever, when a disease causing organism like a bacteria or a virus invade, those are also called a pathogen. So a pathogen is defined as a disease causing organism like bacteria or virus. So when a pathogen invades your body, the body responds by releasing chemicals to raise your core body temperature, which causes you to get a fever to try and make that go away. Okay, so those are all examples of internal stimuli. Those are things that happen from inside of your body. Okay, external stimuli are a lot different. Okay, there's four external stimuli for plants. Those are things that come from outside your body or outside the plant. Okay, these are called tropisms. A tropism is a response that results in plant growth toward or away from a stimulus. Okay, so your four things that are in purple right here are the stimuli. Okay, and the plant responds accordingly. So if we look at this first one, it's called phototropism. Okay, that means in positive phototropism, that means that a plant bends toward the light. So your stems and branches are going toward the light. Okay, negative phototropism is when a plant bends away from the light. So like the roots would grow down away from light. Hydrotropism, hydro means water. So water is your stimulus. Positive hydrotropism is when plant grows towards the water. So like roots, this is water down here, this is dirt. So your roots are growing toward the water to try and soak up the water. Negative hydrotropism is stems and leaves because they grow away from the water. Thigmo means touch. 
So thigmotropism is a plant's response to touch, okay? So if a plant grows toward touch, um, that's positive thigmotropism. So an example of that is like vines. Vines go around branches or around like a wall or a building. So vines are going toward touch, okay? Another thing is a Venus flytrap closing. When a fly enters, it closes to eat the fly. So that's a positive response to touch. So it's positive thigmotropism. Negative thigmotropism, sorry, I ran out of room, is when the plant grows away from touch. So like the leaves grow away from the branch. So that's negative thigmotropism. Make sure you got those written on the picture. And the last one is geotropism or gravitropism. They're the same thing, geotropism or gravitropism. So positive geotropism is when the plant grows toward gravity. So the roots grow toward gravity. And negative geotropism is the branches and leaves that grow away from gravity. So those are the plant responses to external stimuli. Response to light, response to water, response to touch, response to gravity. For animals, your animal responses to external stimuli include fight or flight. Okay, other examples of external are being hot. That, co that comes from outside of your body because it's determinant on the temperature. When you're hot, you sweat. Being cold, you shiver or you get goosebumps. And a lack of sunlight causes you to get sleepy. There's these things called circadian rhythms. It means that we know when it's light outside and we know it's time to wake up. And then when it gets dark, we know that it's time to sleep. So that's an external stimulus. Fight. These are both, fight and flight are both caused by presence of a predator. In some cases, animals want to engage in a fight to make the predator go away. That would be the response. Other cases, the response is to fly or run away. So the presence of a predator can cause an animal to want to run away. Okay, so that's a basic summary of all the notes and all of those things will be on your test on Monday along with everything else I told you. Catastrophic events, watershed, and ecological succession. After you finish the notes for these foldables, you're gonna be working on your color by number. And again, my page numbers are wrong, so follow the numbers in the PowerPoint, okay? And then you're working on this card sort. So you're gonna cut it apart and match the stimulus to the response and glue it. It's kind of squished, so make sure you can fit them all. Um, but all of this will be part of your notebook check on Monday and your test on Monday. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Bye.